going to talk about video games and risk. And in a twist, the people playing the video games are monkey crazy. Um, so the question is, why do monkeys like to gamble? That is a question actually I spent more time thinking about than any other question over the last 10 years of my life. And um, I hope to have some insights I'm going to share with you today. Um, you may be wondering why we're even interested in this question. Of course, people like to gamble under a wide variety of circumstances. You might think, um, here's a casino. Oh, wait, there it is. Sorry. There's a slot machines in a casino. People are very risk prone um, in a casino. But what economists tell us is actually this is a very unusual situation. There's a very special artificial situation where it makes people risk prone. And in the vast majority of situations, human beings are very risk averse. And economists measure this every which way you can imagine, and they assure us that this is true. It's not just people, it's also animals. I recently did a uh, survey of the literature, and I found that actually psychologists have tested over 40 different species of animals and found that every single one of them is risk averse. They like to avoid uncertainty if at all possible, including all the animals here. They've actually tested bumblebees, guppies, goats. They're all uh, trying to avoid risk as much as possible, which leaves um, <laughs> as an exception, monkeys. And this is actually a photo that I took myself of a monkey I found playing poker. Um, <laughs> monkeys, for some reason, are risk-seeking. We don't really know why, um, but we do know that they are. The reason we do know that they are is there are about 20 scientists in the world, 20 labs in the world, minus one of them at the University of Rochester, and we measure risk attitudes in monkeys. This is the way we do it. We go down to this island, this tropical island, off the coast of Puerto Rico, so it's a very nice place to do research if you live in Rochester, especially in February. It's always warm there. We get dressed up. Uh, this is me getting dressed up to do the research, and then we interview these monkeys. So we find them in this kind of semi-natural habitat, uh, and we ask them how they feel about risk. Now, we don't just ask them. With a human, of course, you give them a survey, you'd say, would you rather have $50 or a 50% chance of $100? We don't do that with monkeys. We show them little stimuli, little cardboard cutouts. We have um, computer monitors that we have little video games on, that's mostly what I do, and then we give them rewards, and the rewards are usually pieces of fruit, they're squirts of juice, we have a special apparatus that squirts juice into their mouth, they love juice, juice is like money for these guys, and then we can tell in a variety of ways that these animals are risk-seeking creatures, and that's a mystery, that's a puzzle, because as I said, the vast majority of animals, including humans, are risk-averse. So, um, before I tell you why, I want to tell you why the why, why we study this. And there are really four reasons why we're interested in this question. Number one, animals are a model for people. What we really want to understand ultimately is human attitudes towards uncertainty, especially the brain mechanisms. I'm in the brain cognitive science department. We want to understand how the brain works. In order to do that, you have to measure direct brain activity and you need an animal model. So um, we, need, we need an animal model, and if the monkeys are not a good model, because they have different feelings about risk as we do, that's a problem. Uh, number two, humans suffer from diseases, mood disorders like depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and these diseases are characterized at a very low level by unhealthy, what we call aberrant attitudes towards uncertainty. And these attitudes are thought at a very basic level to drive these diseases. And in fact, we found that if we can change people's attitudes towards uncertainty, we can also reduce the symptoms of their depression, of their anxieties, things like that. So um, understanding these things at a low level and having an animal model for it helps us develop new, innovative, bottom-up, ground-up medical treatments for these horrible diseases. But there's other reasons as well. We're also interested in evolution. Uh, you guys probably are aware, I hope, that my arm and my dog's leg are evolved from the same primordial structure several million years ago. We also know now, we're learning, that our minds are evolved. Our minds um, evolve in exactly the same way our bodies evolve. By understanding the way monkeys' minds work, we can reconstruct our minds in the past. And then finally, we as a species have just always been curious to know what animals think about, what goes on in their minds, and so we're always trying to figure out ways to understand at the most basic level what goes on in the mind of the monkey. So, now that we know why that's important, let's start by talking about the wrong answer to the question, why do monkeys like to gamble? 
And the wrong answer, I think, comes from economic theory. This is sort of our standard explanation for why a monkey might want to gamble. Um, if you go into any Economics 101 classroom, University of Rochester, um, anywhere in the country, they'll tell you the same thing. Human, monkey, doesn't matter. The reason they want to gamble is because they have a convex utility curve over here on the right. On the left is concave. If you're risk averse, you have a concave utility curve. If you're risk seeking, you have a convex curve. What that means is that when you get a small reward, you have a small amount of pleasure. When you get a medium reward, you get a medium amount of pleasure. But when you get a large reward, you get a really large amount of pleasure from that. So there's a nonlinearity in your value function. And that drives risk seeking because if you have a gamble that has a chance of getting that large reward, that extra high weighting you put on a super high value on the large reward motivates you to choose that risky option. Uh, and this, so this is the explanation. This is something that the economists discovered in the 1740s, I believe, and it's never really changed, and we don't think it's right at all. I've actually um, done a lot of experiments, all of which suggest it's wrong. I'm going to tell you about one today. Uh, imagine that you are a monkey living on Monkey Island off the coast of Puerto Rico, and I offer you a choice between two sequences of options, two sequences of about maybe 500 trials in a row. The first sequence is our standard risky option, okay? The computer's going to flip a coin in, internally in software, and it's going to give you either a large or small squirt of juicy juice. Again, this is like crack to monkeys. They love this stuff. Um, the other option is a sequence of options, and we're doing several hundred in a row, um, alternating large and small. So it's, it's the same thing. You get about half large and about half small squirts of juice right into your mouth with the special exception that it's completely predictable. All the risk has been removed. But by the law of large numbers, you're going to get the same number of large and small rewards. And what that does is um, it equalizes out this, what we call nonlinearity of value function. If you have a special high value for large rewards, then um, it doesn't matter, right? It's balanced out of both options. They're, they have the same value. So um, yet, despite this fact, monkeys, and we now have lots of data to support this, really prefer risky sequences to alternating sequences. And that tells us that it's something about the uncertainty itself. There's an intrinsic value in the uncertainty. It has nothing to do with the weight you place, the monkey places, on those values. So uh, as I've said, we have a lot of data. I'm not going to tell you about it. But uh, basically, we think these economic explanations are wrong. And over the years, what we've really decided is that these, the psychological explanations are uh, much more likely to tell us the answer to the question, why do monkey like to gamble? We, um, what, what, let me just say quickly, the way you would um, interview a person is you have them give them a piece of paper, the paper says, you know, hypothetically, if you would rather have a $50 bill or a 50% chance of a $100 bill, something like that. With a monkey, you can't do that. You have to actually go down to the island and you have to ask it in a very different way. And um, we think that, that the way, the different way you ask the question matters. Um, which is exactly what pollsters will tell you about presidential election polls, we now kind of rediscovered that for monkeys. So uh, we call it human factors or monkey factors. Um, in essence, what it means is the mechanics of the task design matter. So um, here's an example. Suppose you have a gamble, 50% uh, you as a person, 50% chance of $10 uh, versus a, well, let's say 50% chance of $10, 50% chance of losing $5. That's a very good investment. Any stock worker would say you should definitely do that. Most people will not do that. The majority of people will say that's too risky for me. I won't do it. People are risk averse. But if I say let's repeat that 100 times in a row, now the majority of people will take that gamble. It's irrational. It's inconsistent. But that's uh, who we are. I feel the same way. I have the same feelings as anybody. Humans and monkeys both, and all the other animals, if you repeat gambles in sequence, that motivates us to become more risk seeking. Okay, and uh, if you're going to pay the ticket to fly all the way down to Puerto Rico, then you're going to definitely not just ask the monkey once, you're going to ask him hundreds of times. And so when we interview these monkeys, the interview in quotes, we essentially get a lot more data, a lot more trial that motivates them to gamble more. Uh, by a similar logic, we give them these little squirts of juice, little tiny pieces of fruit. The monkeys, when they're gambling, they're playing for peanuts. Okay, and when you play for peanuts, you're a lot more likely to gamble. You as a human, or a monkey, um, if I ask you whether you'd rather have a gamble that offers 50% chance of two cents 
or a 50% chance of losing one cent, you're a lot more likely to take that gamble. It's a lot more plausible for you. It's so, such a strong effect and so common that it has a name. It's called the peanuts effect in the literature. Um, and and uh, it's a big motivator for gambling. Again, uh, here's another one. If you gamble for food, you're much more likely to want to gamble than if you're gambling for money that costs the same amount as that food. If you can go buy that piece of food, just having it be food versus money or some other thing that's not money motivates you to gamble. So um, what happens is there's a series of factors. There's like 20 other ones I'm not going to tell you about, but if you put them together, we hypothesize. If you put them together, this together explains why monkeys switch from risk averse to risk seeking behavior. And so, um, of course, we're scientists. We don't want to just you know, say, oh, we have this idea. We want to test this idea. We want to test it. So we did the grand experiment. We put it all together. We brought people into our laboratory. We made them thirsty by giving them pretzels. And we rewarded them with eatery, literally eateries instead of fruit juice. And um, we put a chew soup in their mouth, just like the monkeys. We didn't tell them what was going on. They played this little simple video game that's, you know, at monkey intelligence level, but, you know, people didn't really know what was going on, so they kind of did the best they could. And in essence, what they were doing is they were gambling, and they were learning the same way a monkey learns. When you do this experiment, when we did this grand experiment to test this, we find that monkeys start to look a lot more like humans, right? What do we mean? Humans look more like monkeys. Um, they become a lot more risk-seeking. They have these other patterns that I told you about that resemble monkeys. We're basically recreating uh, monkey psychology here. So uh, ultimately, we were pretty proud of ourselves for figuring this out. Um, then we realized, actually, what we're doing is we're reinventing the wheel. This is kind of disturbing to us. We realized that casino makers actually have discovered a lot of these same principles a long time before us. They, um, they, you don't need money in a slot machine, right? You use tokens. They try to get you away from money as fast as possible. You use these very small amounts, right? There's penny slots and nickel slots. There's not like $50 slots. The slot machines are a lot more popular than the games where you have a lot more money. Um, so they have all these other factors they put together to try to get you to gamble in, in sequence repeatedly. And, and that was, um, first of all, you know, we thought, well, we didn't really discover anything new, but then we realized, actually, we have a good monkey model for problem gambling. Um, and this is important because the last phase, the current phase of our project is we're looking at brain activity while monkeys are making these decisions, and now we can see what goes wrong in the brain when you're more likely to gamble than you should, and that's going to help us develop new treatments for gambling addiction from the ground up. Um, and so I'll just finish by saying one other thing. As this data is coming in, we're starting to see this circuit, this very characteristic circuit of brain areas that's very, um, you know, comes up again and again in these studies of decision making, of risky decision making. But also, these are the same five or six brain areas that are broken, that are busted. They have diseases like depression, um, addiction, anxiety disorders. And so what we're doing now is we're trying to take a lot of these insights that we've gained from the um, neural recordings in these monkeys making these decisions and use them to develop new treatments for these diseases. So um, with that, I will thank you and uh, hope to see you the rest of the day.